This is my purpose on this top 10. If you put your purpose comment below, Kagaya Ichigo Kurosaki's strength is impressive, but he's still a human. Kagaya Otsutsuki, on the other hand, is a god-like being. She had mind-bending powers before even eating the god tree's fruit. She could travel between stars, control minds, and unleash destructive eye shock waves. Even without the fruit, she's almost unstoppable and the most powerful being in Naruto's verse. However, after eating the fruit, she became even mightier, calming a war-torn world alone. She can merge with nature, control ice, fly, and red thoughts. Her chakra and strength surpass even ten tails Jinchuriki. Kagaya can absorb jutsu and defeat even the greatest enemies, and in combat, she's nearly immortal. Seiki, at first glance, Seiki Kusuo might seem like a guy with joysticks on his head and nothing special. Definitely not someone more powerful than Ichigo Kurosaki. But here's the twist. Seiki can give even the mightiest heroes a run for their money, and Ichigo might shed a tear seeing the list of Seiki's powers. Let's just say his two weird joysticks hold a universe of hilariously incredible abilities. From creating chaos with a port to battling ghosts through astral projection or even pulling off wild shenanigans with bilocation, Seiki's got it all. And that's just the tip of the quirky iceberg. From turning things to stone with a glance to making the world's worst coffee, Seiki's array of powers could leave anyone, even Ichigo, scratching his head in amazement. Riot. While Ichigo might pull off impressive moves like Getsuga Tensho, Hollowfication, and his Quincy abilities, there's one character who could put all those impressive moves to vain. We are talking about Ryak, the god of death. Ichigo's attacks will simply sail through Ryak as he chomps on apples, utterly unfazed. What's more, Ichigo can't even see Ryak without his say-so. And as soon as boredom strikes, Ryak's got a killer move, literally. Armed with a death note and the power of a Shinigami, he could pen Ichigo's name and claim his remaining life. Ryak's a god of death, so trying to outdo a deity whose job is reaping souls might just be the height of absurdity. Ichigo kind of has the same job, but for Ryak, fighting means simply writing his opponent's name, Anos Voldegode. In a showdown against Ichigo Kurosaki, there's one name that throws the rulebook out the window, Anos Voldegode. With a confidence that could put Ichigo's bravado to shame, Anos effortlessly moves the moon as if it's a mere plaything. But he's not just about muscle, he's equally intelligent as well. Beneath the Demon King of Tyranny title lies a guy who values character and kindness, doling out life lessons while obliterating enemies with his killer moves. His powers? Anos Voldegode can do literally anything with his godlike powers and magic spells. Against Anos, Ichigo might need a new strategy, one that makes their battle stop somehow, Rimuru Tempest. Moving on to another contender in the anime arena, we have Rimuru Tempest. While Ichigo's feats might be confined to a few kilometers of destruction, Rimuru kicks it up a cosmic notch. With his formidable power Bezelbuth, he could bid adieu to multiple universes in a heartbeat. No matter what powers Ichigo flexes, they just fizzle against Rimuru's might. And guess what? If Rimuru's patience wears thin, he might just unplug the entire Bleach universe like an old computer. But, hold on, there doesn't seem to be a reason for Ichigo and Rimuru to throw down. In fact, if they ever crossed paths, they'd probably swap battle stories and become the best of buds. So, while the idea of these titans duking it out is tantalizing, in the end, friendship could be the real winner. Accelerator, allow us to introduce Accelerator, the Vector Mastermind. His aim mastery grants him the power to reshape reality by mere touch, though there's a glitch he's got a brain condition. But worry not, his lifeline comes in the form of the Masaka network, a symbiotic brainwave connection that steers him right. Now, let's compare them in a battle. Imagine Ichigo's powers as a tranquil pond while Accelerator's capabilities surge like a relentless ocean tide. Infused with Bezelbutt's might, he towers over Ichigo's skill set. Bankai, Hollow Masks, Quincy Powers, they're like pebbles against a tidal wave of Accelerator's powers. With a casual wave of his hand, he could effortlessly unravel the fabric of Bleach's universe. Alucard, in Ichigo Kurosaki's journey against formidable foes, 
none compare to the chilling presence of Alucard. As an immortal vampire weapon of the Helsing organization, Alucard embodies fear itself. His strength transcends mortal limits, his speed is unmatched, and his endurance is unbreakable. The very concept of damage eludes him as he regenerates from wounds that would fall any other. Centuries of experience have enhanced his battle strategies. Unyielding regeneration renders him invulnerable, and his very existence defies reality. In the world of Helsing, Alucard stands as the ultimate terror, feared even among his own kind. And while Ichigo is no stranger to strong opponents, he would find Alucard unmatched to a great extent. Goku, in the realm of heroic battles, Ichigo stands tall as the valiant defender of the Soul Society and Karakura Town, confronting malevolent forces like Hollows and Espadas with unwavering courage. Yet, a world away, Goku fights a similar battle, however, his adversaries are of far greater scale, causing a threat to universes and galaxies. So, it's easy to say Goku's feats are unmatched compared to Ichigo's. While both warriors champion humanity's cause, pitting Ichigo against Goku in a hypothetical showdown yields a harsh truth. The clash's outcome would rend Ichigo's supporters' hearts, for Goku's sheer might would effortlessly shatter Ichigo's defenses. Saitama, our fondness for Ichigo Kurosaki leads us to wish that in a face-off against Saitama, the Cape Baldi, Ichigo manages to avoid angering him. If Ichigo inadvertently riles up Saitama, Ichigo's fate could be sealed. Even his formidable techniques like Getsuga Tensho, Hollowfication, and Quincy Powers might barely leave a mark on Saitama. In contrast, a single serious tap from Saitama's finger could potentially spell Ichigo's demise. Saitama's might is so immense that he could conceivably obliterate the entire universe of Bleach with a mere punch. In such a scenario, the grandeur of Bankai or Shikai's abilities might pale in comparison to the sheer power of Saitama's wrath. Thus, it's almost a blessing if Ichigo and Saitama never engage in combat, lest Ichigo faces a challenge beyond even his impressive arsenal of skills. You watch. Amidst these speculative scenarios, it's crucial to recognize a character within the realm of Bleach who undeniably surpasses Ichigo, the almighty You watch. As the Quincy King, You watch's dominance is unmatched in the Bleach universe. A one-on-one -on -one confrontation with him is a daunting prospect, for no other character seems capable of besting him. Yawatch's power, known as the Almighty, grants him the ability to see into the future with unparalleled precision. This foresight enables him to foresee all potential outcomes of events, allowing him to make optimal decisions in any situation. Such incredible mastery over destiny places him far above his peers. His power even extends to altering the future, reshaping events to his advantage. This renders Yawatch an almost insurmountable force, capable of outmaneuvering opponents before they even realize his actions. Thanks for listening to my purpose. Have a good day.